All right, shall we do some programming? Yeah, let's do some programming. Okay, I'm an SSH agent. Okay, uh, so yeah, let's see. It's asking me for a password. For the viewers, oh yeah, you you have uh, anticipated my denouement. <laughs> um, so yeah, for the for the people watching this later, um, I was going to talk a little bit about how for remote pair programming you have to have a couple of things. Um, first off, obviously, is that you have to be able to connect to the same machine. Um, and let's see, in order to be able to make that work, uh, I just use Hamachi. And so if you can drag Hamachi onto your screen and show the process of like just grabbing my IPv4 address, sure. yeah, it's, it's not I much, but... I did this program right uh, here. I can see Sam and I copy the IPv4. And this is a free thing that just lets you do virtual private networks. This is what I use to avoid dealing with my router config all the damn time. Um, so once you've done that, you also have to be able to log into the same machine. And so, James, you just tried to SSH. Uh -huh. And I had not yet created a pair account for you. Uh -huh. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, create pair user. This is using the LS pair toolkit. And I'm going to just create an account for you. All right, so go ahead and try that again. And there we go. I'm in. All right, and then the last thing is that uh, once you're connected to the same machine, it really helps if you can share the same environment. Um, and so I've been in the habit of using a small wrapper script called Wemux, and Wemux handles the details of setting up a Tmux session and making it accessible to multiple users. Um, and the host, that would be me, runs Wemux server in a terminal. And then the guest runs Wemux pair, and then boom, you're both talking to each other. I'm not running Wemux server yet, but James, if you can try running Wemux pair just so we can show the error message. It says, no server to pair with on Wemux. Right-ho. So now I shall type Wemux server. Uh, or, no, it's Wemux start, sorry. There we go. So now you should be able to connect again. And I'm in there. And you're in. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I have... Uh, I'm in the habit of keeping a zero window open just so that I can monkey around with my aliases and so on. Uh, let's create a window and name it Emacs. <laughs> Sam knows what I like. <laughs> yep. And launch Emacs, because that's going to take a while. <laughs> oh, actually, no. Uh, I guess the first thing we need to do is grab your code somewhere, huh? Well, uh, I thought we'd just make something from scratch. Can I just make a directory here? Sure, go for it. Okay, how about, uh, let's just do, how about we do, I'm going to show you a little bit of a Sokoban problem, which is a famous old computer game. So we'll just create like a lib directory and a spec directory or something like that. When that already sense? you're doing something, I don't know what you just did. That's cool. <laughs> oh, that's uh, make dash p, so here, we can show it. Uh, yeah, the dash p. And yeah, it creates the intermediate subdirectories. Path, and mm -hmm. uh, then I just use the. So, yeah, dash p would have created any missing directories in the chain. Mm -hmm. um, so, I may not have actually needed that in this case, but I'm just in the habit of always using it, so I never oh, yeah. uh, worry about it. But then the, uh, uh, the bash syntax there for uh, lib and spec, uh, so I could get the two subdirectories. Yeah. Neat. Okay, well, that's very cool. So then we'll just see in here. And All right. No, co no code required. <laughs> Yay! All right, so now you can launch Emacs. Okay. And then, like, five minutes later. Yeah, um, and well, you know, <laughs> then we will now have a word from our sponsors. Do we have sponsors? <laughs> sponsors? Uh, <laughs> this brought to you by my computer. <laughs> uh, so while that launches, I'm going to rename this window to Vim and, of course, CD Soko Barn. And Vim. And Emacs is still launching. <laughs> it's fine. It's <laughs> totally right. normal. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so you want to talk about the uh, the problem today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this comes from a uh, buddy of mine and I. Uh, the, a couple weekends back, we just got together and we're like, hey, let's figure out this Ruby Gosu thing. And... Um, we sat down from nothing and grabbed some free tiles off the internet and 
and uh, some Sokoban levels um, and just built a Sokoban clone using Ruby Gosu. Uh, and, and it was interesting for several reasons, but one uh, sub part of what makes it interesting is that uh, when you go to parse Sokoban files, uh, they're very simple, uh, just like six ASCII characters or something like that that represent the map, six each. Um, and, uh, it, but there's some interesting challenges in them, and so I thought it might be fun for us to uh, discuss that a little bit, the process of parsing Sokoban ASCII maps into some kind of game structure. All right, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's fun, and there's uh, there's kind of a horrible curveball in it, which is why I thought it <laughs> makes for an interesting problem. I, I came up with a solution to it, and I hate it, uh, so I'm hoping <laughs> Sam is smarter than I am. <laughs> or at least, yeah, maybe I'll come up with a different one that we hate more, right. and you'll feel better about yourself. <laughs> exactly. Either way, I win, which is what's right. important. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to, in the interest of skipping the boring parts, mm -hmm. I thought I would just code up a stupid rudimentary um, level uh, representation using just a few lines of code, and we could talk about that real quick, and then we could just forget it exists and, and just focus on the parsing problem. If Sounds that's okay fine. with you. Yep. Okay, so um, show that. I'm going to uh, open a file here. And we'll just, uh, whoops, that's not what I meant to do, sorry. Uh, open a file here. Okay, I have to remember how to use Emacs, apparently. Okay, I got apparently it. Apparently recording a screencast is equivalent to live coding. Okay, it carries right, the same yeah. curse. <laughs> I've been on vacation for a while, if I haven't mentioned that, so I probably excuses, forgot. Excuses, excuses how to code <laughs> <laughs> yeah i thought that too but I it turned out to be okay <laughs> i'm glad it was okay for one of us <laughs> um okay so here is just a level file mm -hmm. and i just want to do something stupid simple in here so we'll just make a module and then we'll make some class level and uh and we have i want the simplest level thing that could possibly uh, work. Yep. I so like it. Uh, I'm thinking something like this, where we pass in rows, and rows would be like an array of arrays, uh, mm -hmm. where each uh, entry in the inner array is the cell and what's actually in that specific cell. Okay. It's a 2D map, if I haven't made that clear. I'll show you examples of it in just a minute. Yeah, I figured, and I, I assume there are constraints around it being rectangular. and uh, well, That's one of the interesting twists, ah, actually. Um, but yes, sort of. Um, so okay. then let's, yep. uh, we'll just have rows like this, and then down here, just to make accessing it easier so we don't have to hunt through these things, um, why don't we have a simple accessor method like this, it takes an X and a Y, Perfect. and uh, this is from the upper left corner of the board, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so we would do rows Y and X, which is yep. always breaks my brain because it's in row major. So each right. row is, uh, you know, the Y going down, and then uh, the inner arrays are the X going across. So, All right. Uh, uh, just... This is not really the point, but you could transpose the array on the way in, and then your indices would be correct. That, that of course, is the map true. would print differently. It is true. The reason I tend not to do that, it's a good point, actually, um, and more transposing fun later, but um, <laughs> <laughs> stick around. I'm just going to get all your jokes, huh? Uh, let's see. Um, but the reason I usually don't transpose and I leave it in real major is... Um, when it comes to uh, printing the thing, so like in our case, we were rendering it on a window, um, it's usually very easy to just 
uh, take a row at a time and then going across, drop in the sprites and then go down to the next row mm -hmm. and drop in the sprites below that. Especially we had these kind of, the sprites kind of overlapped a little bit to create what I think is called a isometric view where it's kind of 3D-ish, oh, you know? okay, yeah. And um, so you have to be careful not to, uh, it, it's easier to render top to bottom, basically. So, gotcha. Uh, that makes that kind of easy. Um, and then the idea is we need some concept of what a cell is. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, all of this is, uh, I'm mostly trying to ignore all of this. Yeah. So uh, we, we won't discuss whether or not this is the best. But uh, how about we just make some concept of like a cell, uh, which is an individual spot in the level. Uh, and then we can give it a contents. So like a cell might mm -hmm. contain something, we'll default that to nil. So um, if it's nil, it's a floor tile, basically? Uh, yes, and the floor can contain uh, crates, uh, or it can contain the character, right? Okay. Uh, the yep. person that you're moving around. Um, so, uh, whoops, let's actually put an S on that, it'll probably make more sense. But if I can learn the keyboard. There's a slight lag, <laughs> and it no. throws, throws me off. Um, okay. Okay, so now we have this idea of contents and cells, and then there's different kinds of cells. So uh, I'll just give you the basic types here. Uh, the most obvious, of course, is floor, which we'll just say inherits from cell, and do that, and then... We'll just copy it a bunch. Uh oh, I hit a bunch of keys and it didn't do anything. Now it says mark set. Oh. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's not what I expected. Interesting. <laughs> huh. If I delete that. Interesting. I don't. Huh. Something's weird with the clipboard there. Okay, I'll do it a different way. Hmm. Uh, I have not, we moved my Emacs config over to um, Sam's computer. But yeah, and we did a quick test run the other day, but apparently didn't check out copying and pasting because yeah, I can't how hard is paste. that? I know, right? <laughs> I thought that would work. I am surprised. Uh, huh. well. I wonder what's eating my, um, well, I mean. You want me to go and make some subclasses of this real fast? Yeah, sure. I'll let you do it. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. All right. So I'm going to switch over to Vim. And that was in lib, suck up on level, I'll unfold all of this, and how many of these do you want? Um, so we have floor, and then we have, um, we have a, a cell, which is like a, a target or a goal, maybe mm -hmm. goal is a good name, that's where the goal. crate ends up. Okay. Uh, at the end, we have okay. walls, uh, or a type of cell. Okay. Um, and then, let's see, I'm trying to make sure I think of all of them. Floor, wall, goal, and then make one called void. We'll discuss why we need that later. <laughs> um, okay. And then, uh, actually, that's it right there. Okay. And then and... I would just <clears throat> add two uh, other empty classes that don't have to inherit from anything. One called character and one called crate. And that's so that they can be the contents of the, Got it. Uh, you know, the thing. So this is my attempt to give us the minimal possible representation of a Sokoban level. Uh, okay. Where we have this concept of levels, which is an array of arrays. And it has uh, these floor cells or goal cells or walls or voids. And they may or may not contain characters and crates. I gotcha. Okay. And so... Yeah, at first I think I was thinking that the cell seemed like a strange thing to to have subtypes of because I was thinking that the contents of the cell would be a floor or a wall tile or something like that, but seeing the character and create as the contents actually makes that make sense. So, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, and this is just like 
the minimal thing I can think of, and, and yeah. we could. Uh, there probably are better ways to do it, but this has nothing to do with the problem. This is just people. setting us up to start doing some TDD. So right, exactly. So, uh, anyways, I just wanted to do that. So cool. Thank you. Shall we do some testing now? Yeah. All, All right. right. Would we rather use our test or mini spec? Uh, I do not care. You do I've not been care. using our spec the most lately, but mini Maybe. spec is close enough that. I'll figure I've, it out. I've used our spec the most lately too, so we'll do that. Sounds like a winner. Um, do you mind if I'll just add a gem file here? Sure. Out of habit. Um, and go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so a gem file has a source. HTTPS, I believe, is what we're supposed to use these days. Mm hmm. Okay, and we'll install gem our spec, um, and then maybe gem auto t uh, Zen test. Sure, if you like. Uh, oops, I think it's Zen test. Okay, uh, so that's a minimal gem file. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a shell over here. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, and then we can bundle. Oops. I have bundle alias to B, just for future oh, cool. reference. That is good. I actually have that same alias, but I, I, I purposefully skipped it since I was on a different machine. <laughs> Similarly, I have git alias to G, which actually reminds me this might be a good time for a git init. Oh, yeah, git init. Yeah, sure. Um, Okay. So get it, that's like get with nothing. Uh -oh. Um, oh, your they're, shell, they're your shell doesn't have my source. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Hmm, okay. There you go. Huh, cool. Um, awesome. Uh, that's it. that's interesting. I probably won't use it because I have <laughs> get ali or g alias to get status. So ah, okay, very good. I I use it as a quick view of like, hey, what's going on in Git? Um, yeah, very good. Which is uh, very interesting. Okay, so okay. do you happen to have bundle exec? Is that bx? Bx. Okay, gotcha. Um, bundle exec or spec dash dash init. I think we'll put in that. Mm. Oh, could not find it. Did my bundle fail? Yeah, did we miss something? I don't think it failed. Um, let me check real quick. No, my bundle is. your bundle is complete, but it doesn't is, mention. Oh, invalid gem spec. Oh. At Sam Racing Grant Action Build Form Requirement. What is Present that? Present test. That is interesting. We can is, take it out. Is Zen test just for um, auto, auto auto running? Test. Yeah, we can. But we can totally take it out. We don't. Okay. It's not a big deal. Um, okay. I'll do that. Okay, and we'll bundle again. Make sure we get it. <laughs> that is interesting. Look at that. It's giving me the warning even with it out of there. Hmm. Yeah, that is odd. I wonder what's going on there. Anyways, interesting. Now I'm getting the warning even when I do that. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I am still using RVM. What if we isolate this thing? Just a second. Um, I'm going to go create another window for this. Um, and I have a little script that does RVMify. And that uh, creates the Ruby gem set in Ruby version. Okay. So if I come out of this directory and then go back into it, then RVM should uh, create a new gem set okay. and switch to it. And if I bundle that, <clears throat> then it'll reinstall them into that gem set. Okay. okay. So now if you do basically the same thing, uh, CD just... up and then back in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll see if that fixes it. 
Okay, so now we're using the gem set, and hopefully we're good. And I did get the R spec to do its thing, so we're good. Okay, enough messing okay. around with infrastructure. <laughs> Yay, IT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the fun part of our job, right? <laughs> right. Um, okay, so then the idea is we want to write a uh, parser spec. Yeah. So, spec, and let's just say parser spec. Okay, and uh, then we need to uh, require the files that we're interested in. Um, so require relative, um, we need to get in lib, so on. Uh, and I made a level file. Mm -hmm. So we need that. And I do not know why I don't have copy and paste. I assume I still don't. I still oh, don't. man. Interesting. That is so weird. Um, shoot, next time, note to self, check copy and paste. <laughs> right. Um, Who knew? <laughs> right. Exactly. Web. So come on. And then we'll have a parser. This is the thing we actually care about. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So then we will describe... Okay, and then we can do we could do the test several ways, um, but I think I'm actually going to recommend again in the interest there's there's the basic parsing part, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I think um, you can probably imagine is is pretty straightforward. We need to convert these ASCII characters into that uh, representation. And uh, I'm that, guessing that take that looks something like take a string, split it on new lines, then split on dot, and parse each character individually, something along those lines. Sounds good. I'm going to let you write it anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so how about we just do basic parsing? Uh, but again, I'm not going to focus too heavily on this. This is like a good on-ramp task to make yep. sure we're on the same page, but... Um, the interesting part comes after we're past this part, in my opinion. So, <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so anyways, let's do like, um, let's make like a minimal, mm -hmm. minimal level or something. Uh, or maybe more like a minimal map. Uh, yeah, I guess. Since we parse true. a map to get a level, it's not that's, kind of naming conflicts. That's actually a good point, actually. Okay. Um... So we have this idea of a minimal map, and people kind of differ in how they do this. Like, I guess the minimal map is you could make a wall and parse that and check that. Um, yeah. I, I usually don't do that because uh, then I worry that someday I'll have some process where I do something like validate that a map is okay. Exactly. And uh, then it won't validate and it'll break everything. Um, right. So I usually try to go for the minimal thing that actually makes sense. Agreed. Um, Besides, so, a one by one map is pretty boring. It's boring, right? You can't do a lot. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make a here back here. I use yep. the syntax so I yep. can indent it. Um, and then, uh, okay. So let's. These are the ASCII characters. Uh, pound means wall. At symbol means open floor with the character on it. So that's the character, the person mm -hmm. we're moving around. A space means open floor, so that's uh, the ones I've entered so far. Mm -hmm. Dollar sign means crate. Okay. Uh, dot means uh, goal, uh, oh, so okay. where where you're trying to push the crate. Mm -hmm. And then one of the curveballs, which we could actually totally ignore, but it's basically free to get if you get the others, okay. um, is uh, asterisk. And asterisk means um, uh, a goal with a crate on it. Um, ah, already, okay. so okay. Um, it doesn't come up until some of the later levels, and then I'm going to go ahead in all the normal Sokoban levels. Uh, typically, they do have um, walls all around, so you don't really have to worry about like uh, the character running out into oblivion sure. or whatever. All right, and, and already I can see that that gives me a, a convenient thing to hang the white space problem on. So. Right, the white space problem. So here's this is interesting. 
uh, you just brought up the white space problem. I didn't want to put this all on the left margin because that drives me crazy. <laughs> so now I'm just going to cheat. Oh, and, okay. Um, that works too. Any white space at the beginning of a line, let's just nuke it, right? So, okay. Yeah. Uh, and so you can this, do that because you are sure that you always start a new wall with uh, or a new line with a wall. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So the, okay. in this case, uh, this will make uh, this block will actually be Left all aligned. that's in the string, and Ruby's going to throw away the space for me. So okay. Uh, that way, it just left me indented. And I could have done that in other ways or put it on the left margin or whatever, but sure. I just think that looks pretty. Okay, and then, uh, again, in the interest of, uh, you know, keeping this pretty simple, let's just have, like, parsed. Mm -hmm. CD. And then the idea of that is just, it's our Silkabomb parser dot parse. There's our first imaginary method that doesn't really exist yet. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, apparently I cannot <laughs> autocomplete a symbol because it doesn't uh, start with a colon. <laughs> okay, hmm. so uh, the idea is we'll do that. And okay. then we should be able to write a bunch of very basic specs about yeah. this thing. And it actually turns out that once you've implemented like the very first one, and got enough infrastructure, the other whatever, five or however many I haven't actually counted, are super easy <laughs> because it's yeah. just a slight modification. I can kind of see that. So uh, okay. let's just start with the uh, basic idea of it uh, parses the character. And I'll sketch out what I think this would look like. So, uh, given parsed, whatever is uh, returned by parsed should mm -hmm. be a level. And that, by the way, is the reason I used a class method instead of like a normal constructor or something. It should go through the parser, do whatever the parser does, but I actually want a level back. I don't want a, a parser back. Okay, right? at this point, um, do, you, do you mind doing a split screen so that I can see the... Uh code alongside the test? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. No problem. Um, let's see. Whoops. Uh, well, there we go. Thank so you. So, like, like that. All right. Um, okay. And then, so maybe this is actually better called level instead of parts. Yeah, Since it's more like minimal level. Right. Since we're contreating it. Yeah, minimal level is probably even better. You're right. Because there will be other levels. Um, <laughs> Minimal level. Okay. Stay tuned for horrible level. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, so it parses the character, and so the, the way we might think of this is, uh, whoops, minimal level. And let's do the thing, the character's at 1-1, one, one, technically, I guess, okay. using our coordinates that we developed earlier. So, uh, Oh, and I should have made this. Uh, and now you don't have to keep X and Y straight. <laughs> and now I don't have to keep X and Y straight, which is good. Yay! Um, expect to be an instance of is how we'll do this. Uh, so nice I macro. Should have put this here. Uh, minimal level, bracket, one comma, one. I would have moved it with copy and paste, but, you know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, so then type is uh, we want this to be floor, right? Because the character stands on open floor. Yeah, um, okay. And, and then the other thing is that uh, expect to... I can't remember what the R spec one is for um, be same, is that it? Uh, I think it's just to be, or maybe it's be same as. Yeah, well, and now that I'm thinking about it, that won't work either because, um, you know what, let's do instance of again. Um, sure, yeah. Uh, because what I want to say is that the minimal level at 1, 1, it's contents mm -hmm. uh, should be character. Okay. 
Right, so this is it and should give us a failing test. And I recognize that I wrote way too much infrastructure there and like testing and it would have been better to take it in small steps. I'm actually just trying to give us enough that actually after we complete this step, we'll be mostly through all of the boring parts. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's uh, it's giving me a chance to let the caffeine kick in. So. <laughs> so let's see. Hopefully we have a failing spec now. No such file below the circle bound parser. Sounds perfect. Take it away, Sam. All right. I'm going to go back over to my editor. And let's see. Let's go up to, sorry, spec, parser spec. And we have it parses the character, and I'm going to recreate the thing that you just did, which was just BXR spec. Okay. I'm also in the habit of doing clear before I run specs because ah, I... that's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. Just because I, I'm terrible at parsing out like exactly where the beginning of a long line of errors is. I'm totally going to steal that. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So parser spec is not finding... Oh, no parser file. Well, that's easy enough to fix. All right, let's switch back to Vim. And let's create one of those. Uh, and was that Sokoban parser? So let's just add a file here, uh, parser.rb. <laughs> so I've already noticed there are multiple errors in my spec. This will be wonderful for you. Sweet. Which is the reason why you don't write that much at once, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, there's some style, style things we could talk about as well, but it's red, green, refactor. So let's, <laughs> let's get to green first. <laughs> let's get to green. Okay, so uh, I probably didn't even need that module Sokoban, actually. So I'm just to be completely purist about it, I'm going to see what that does to the message. And now I have an uninitialized Sokoban parser. Um, all right, so if I put that in and then I do class parser then what do I get? I get that thing not having a parse method. Um, at this point, uh, we talked about doing ping pong pairing, which traditionally is, uh, you know, I write a test, you make it pass, you write a test, I make it pass, and so on. Um, but a buddy of mine a couple of years ago introduced me to this variant where you can pass control back and forth as soon as you've changed the message, which I've just done twice. So uh, if you'd like to flip back and forth, Sounds good. That's um, cool. So here, why don't you take that one? Okay. Uh, yeah, perfect. Let's see. Where am I here? Almost my cursor. You're oh, in the bottom right. Am. Okay, gotcha. Um, I'm going to fix the mistake I saw. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, Sokoban actually level mm -hmm. four. <laughs> right. Um, uh, Sokoban. Level character. Okay. Okay. That will save us some pain later. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Okay. And then parser is over here. And so let's just go here and do fi uh, parse. Uh, oh, jeez. That's not fi. Just def, yeah. S parse. P -R -S -E. um, and it has to take in a uh, map. Uh, whoops. Oh, right. <laughs> Two maps. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that right. should probably improve the error message. I like your idea of clear. Give that a shot. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. That's good. Okay. Um, so expect it to be an instance of Sigmund so level undefined method for nil class. Yep. I definitely changed the error message. Go ahead. All right. Well, I can change that error message too by simply. Uh, Returning an array from that. All right, yours. Nil to be an instance of Sokoban Okay, um, so that was wonderful and awesome. Um, okay, let's actually uh, expected nil. Uh, what was the oh? Hi, you took the error message away. I oh yeah, like, yeah. That's not the error message. I should probably just use your shell in Emacs. It's fine. It's, it's totally fine. Um, okay. okay. So expect minimal to be an instance of oh, right. Sokoban okay. level, and it's actually nil. So what it gave, what we gave it back was an empty array, and right. we, we gave it the slicing syntax, <laughs> and it returned nice. nil. Yes, yes, yes. 
So, so that's not calling what we want it to call, right? right. So are we um, missing a test? So, what'd you say? Are we missing a test? Oh, um, it's a good question. Yeah, I mean, okay. So yeah, let's do it that way. Uh, ideally, I guess we should say... Um, <laughs> it gives us a map. <laughs> yeah, it uh, parses maps into levels. How's sure. that? I'll buy that. Um, okay, so then the idea is that minimal level... Uh, geez, I keep forgetting to do the extra yeah. thing first, which would be fine if I copy and paste. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, okay, so then uh, minimal level, and then uh, we sh that should be an instance of Sokoban level. level. Uh, whoops, colon. Okay, there's that, and so now I assume we have multiple failures. Yeah. Sure. Uh, okay, does so that count as changing the error message? I or would definitely say so. Okay, so take it away. All right, so well, we can fix that by just changing this to return Soko bon level dot new, I think. Yeah, typo and there. And then, oh, it's did I? Slight typo. Oh, right. Sorry. Thank you. And, and okay. Long number of arguments. Right, because that thing expects... Oh, sorry. Ah, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I change yeah. the message. Go for it. <laughs> no problem. Um, so now we can use your empty array idea. <laughs> <laughs> right? There yep. it is. Ta-da! <laughs> no, I think we actually have to give it an, an array of arrays, an empty table. Ah, good point. Uh, you're right. Uh, so it's actually array. Arrays. Yep. Yay! Unexpected. Oh, that didn't change the. Arrays. No, really. That is interesting. Why did it? Uh, it's undefined blank for no class. Now, why well, would that level be? twenty-five? Let's go look. Because at that. I know why. Okay. Because we asked for row one. Which is the second oh, array, yes. and there isn't a second array. So if we do that, now we will actually get nil expected to be an instance of level four, which is basically <laughs> the error message I've been looking for all the okay. time, right? So go ahead. Okay. And what I did was horrible. <laughs> well, well, yeah, Never but, ever do that. No, no, no. But it, well, I and mean, that actually raises a good point, which is that, uh, it's red green refactor and technically if you're doing small steps um, and especially if you're doing like malicious ping ponging it's fun to like do something that makes the test pass but is obviously evil right um so yeah all right so enough stalling sam <laughs> all right so now we actually have to look at this map and see what's in it so uh i'm going to start by just uh Raising the uh, raise map inspect. This is where we find out if James told the truth about that regex he wrote earlier. Yep, you did. Thank you, <laughs> sir. All right, and knowing that, then we can do some silly things like let's see, map split on new lines, map line. Oops. All right, and so that's going to give us rows, I think, right? And the level, sorry, I'm getting lost in where this thing is. Okay, so we're just going to give this thing rows. Okay, so in theory, then, I could take this and return from that an array, and that would give me, instead of a uh, table with two empty arrays in it, I would get a table with three empty arrays in it. That's right. So if I pass this, I won't have changed the message, but I think I will have changed the behavior. That's my prediction. Oh, I changed the message too. Really? Uh, no, same message. No expected to be an instance of four. Well, That's right. okay, I'm just, I didn't actually read what was there before, but it looked like there were two failures and now there is one. 
no, I did. I, I okay. can show you what was before. Hang okay. On. Uh, Let's see. In Emacs, it's kind of weird to scroll up to what was... Oh, yeah. no, maybe I can't because of the clear. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> okay. Guess Emacs handles clear slightly different. <laughs> Alrighty, then. Well, that's fun. Uh, okay. But I believe that was the message. But it, like you said, you changed the intent, so I'm totally cool with it. Okay. So now we have to deal with uh, parsing out an individual line. And so for the line, we're going to line split... Is it? This is where your encyclopedic knowledge of the uh, core classes comes in. Can I in answer handy. before it's asked? Yes. It's an empty string. If you pass split an empty string, like, okay. I think is what you were about to ask. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to say scan. Oh, scan just scan on dot? characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can get is that. What it is? Sure. Okay. And that'll get me the character. And then I can do something with that character. So now this should change the message instead of nil Actually, being an inst instance. So no. Scan behaves unusually when you pass a block. Ah, what have it I done? It does not return the array of matches if you pass a block. Yeah. Instead, it iterates over them, but it doesn't return the whole thing. Okay. So if you actually want to return right. them, you probably need to change that into dot scan dot map or something. Right, or something like that. If not ah. given a block, scan will return an array of all the matches. <laughs> okay, so scan that thing, dot map it, and that should give me an array, a table of characters. I believe And so now it should complain that that, that character is, at is not an instance of floor. Probably, I think you're right, yes. Okay, and that's a change and it's back to you. That's perfect, right? Okay. Okay, so, um, uh, so we have to get to green before we can refactor. So mm -hmm. I will just, um, let's do the dumbest thing we could possibly do. Yes, um, please. Let's do, um, uh, A hash? I want to name this constant map mapping, which occurs to me is not a great name. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a not great name is better than no name. So let's <laughs> yeah. put it in and you, fix it later. Feel free to improve it. Um, Map mapping or whatever. It's the mapping of characters in maps. <laughs> yep. <laughs> For... Well, we could call it a map hash so that people from other languages would be confused as to it being a hash map. <laughs> <It's> what, <laughs> which version of it we mean? <laughs> yes. <laughs> because those two words are not at all ambiguous in computer science. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so right. we need this idea of this character and then... Uh, we need what that character becomes. Yes. Uh, which is kind of interesting because uh, I think I prefer to have them generated each time. So I'm going to do that with a stabby lambda. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the idea is that uh, it could be a uh, whoops, level uh, for, whoops, for mm -hmm. new with character. Ah, I see. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that let me... And the idea of passing the lambdas around is then, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the other one that's floor and doesn't have a character or whatever it can be. And I totally screwed that up, by the way. Um, level. Also, now that I am explicitly using a level in this file, mm -hmm. I would prefer to make this file require the... Agreed. Uh, level. And, and that also makes my test look better uh, because it can go away. Yep. In here. It's so weird that I can kill things, but uh, killing things doesn't apparently put them on my kill ring or something. It's kind of weird. Interesting. Um, I wonder if you're. I wonder if Tmux is doing something, or Remux even is doing something clever with the uh, paste buffer. I don't know. That's a good question, actually. Um, okay, so that uh, should give me that, and then the idea is that I can use map mapping, best mm -hmm. name ever. <laughs> don't worry, James. This is on video. People will only be able to make fun of it forever. Um, okay, let's do that, and then do call. This is where the magic happens, people. <laughs> or this is you watching the sausage get made or something. All right. Ah, uh, yes, um, that's what I thought might happen. 
Oh, nice. Did I blow it up? <laughs> yeah, we did. Okay, so, well, good. Take it from there, Sam. <laughs> all right. And so I think what happened, what just happened there, oh, interesting. It uh, reloaded and refolded everything there. All right. Um, I'm going to move this level over to the right a little bit more because I like vertical space. <clears throat> so what happened there, uh, no, actually, I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, is that the map mapping returned nil and we tried to call nil. So I think probably the quickest way out of that is oh, to okay. set map There's no default, mapping right? default, yep, equals stabby lambda, <laughs> and that's going to be level floor new with no contents, right? Uh, I'd make it an empty lambda, have it return nil, and the reason mm -hmm. I would say to do okay. that is I would rather it blow up <laughs> if I make... I'd rather get a no out of it and have it blow up if it was going to do something with it. Sure, you know? sure. All right. It's okay. Audi's never going to watch this either, either so we're good. <laughs> Oops. All right. Did that change it? Yes, we passed. Whoa, we got to green. Yay. All right. <laughs> Yay. Now let's fix all the sins we've just committed. Right. Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's Who's red refactoring green. This? Refactor. Uh, can I take a first pass? Take it. Okay. Uh, okay, so here is, I do this a lot, make uh, class methods be the interface mm -hmm. uh, of my thing. Guilty as, uh, as well, Especially yeah. in a case like this where I want some parsing to happen, I want a lot of figuring things out to happen, uh, but then uh, I don't want to get back this parser thing and have to interact with it, I just want a level as the end result. But the fact that I did this doesn't mean I don't want the usual object orientation, nice, uh, you know, everything's broken down stuff. So right. because as you um, as you mentioned that, I realized that class parser, we never actually interact with an instance, so that might as well be a module. Right, exactly. So um, when I do this, I'm usually wanting something uh, mm -hmm. like this, where I pass in a map, map here, yep. store the map, um, give myself a reader. I try not to, I, I try only to interact with instance variables through readers. Yep. Um, so that, Sandy yeah, would be happy. I can always change it someday if I want to. Mm -hmm. I, I reserve the right to change it. <laughs> um, okay, so okay, uh, there's that. And then the idea is, you know, we'll have some level like, or some method like to level or whatever that mm -hmm. uh, does the final level. Yep. Um, okay, so this is the thing. So then, what I love about this is now I have a space to hang all the ugly stuff. Yeah. Um, so let's but do... But I think you're jumping ahead of yourself, sir. Oh, am I? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say that? Oh, uh, because nothing's using this yet. Nothing is using this. So what, why don't we move the contents of self.parse down into two level and call it from there before we ah, go good extracting. Point, good point, good point, good point. I was going to, yeah, you're right. I skipped this step. You're right. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, let's make it use it, which would be uh, this thing is basically... Uh, that whole thing goes down. Yeah. Uh, this goes down. Oh, here. I see. Interesting. Okay. Oh, like and we just oh, copy and I paste it. Huh. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, you want me to do ahead. that? Paste away. <laughs> All, All right. right, you paste it. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like you didn't save that. Oh, sorry. There, it is. there we are. Okay. So that you wanted there? Yes. Uh, two level, and then I. Oh, oh, that's an interesting question. Where should the? Yeah, and the other line should be there too. I just missed it. Okay. So I'll just move that down as well and so this is new map to level and all of that goes away exactly you get me <laughs> yep all right let's see that okay so uh is that hopefully uh that hopefully should, we're passing Did we check? that should be a refactoring this is why we have tests okay good. okay <laughs> <laughs> it works yay um okay then i would I love to worked. It works, yes. <laughs> I would love to extract uh, some of this. Um, Absolutely. That is some ugly right there. Yeah. Like, I would like for all of this to go away 
and mm-hmm. this line to be it. <laughs> um, well, it'd be perfect. Okay. Uh, which is actually easy. That the first step of that's really easy. Yeah. It's really easy. Uh, def rows, right? Yep. And, and I'll let Sam be my copy and paste guru again. Go ahead. <laughs> you say guru, I say slave. <laughs> whatever all right semantics yeah. okay all right so with that that should do the job there and and it's just scrolled you down to the bottom of the file there it looks like yeah i you know what i didn't save or something yeah mm. i didn't save if i try to save it says has changed save anyway no, no. okay so that was a but save. Can you how... open? Yeah, I can do that. Yes. Um, uh, kill it anyway. Yes. yes. And then open it. Part of the fun of passing things back and forth. There we go. Yep. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is, and it should. I can't remember. Okay. Check yep. it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then I would like to try the first real refactoring. Yes. Um, I would like to try map dot lines yep. as a Ruby oh. one nine. Oh. Yeah, I can just ask right. for lines. Um, okay, so that is. Oh, I'm exposed to somebody who's stuck on one eight seven at work still. <laughs> <laughs> so that's lines, and then uh, similarly, okay. just because it's basically the same thing. We could say oops. Oh yes, very good. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so right. uh, those are just yeah, you know, stupid yeah. simple. There's uh, one more simple thing in there. And what's that? Which is that uh, that operation of going into the map mapping is uh, not intention revealing. So let's do a let's ext- let's extract that to a method also. Sounds good. Go for it. All right. Uh, that one, I think, what should we call that thing? Uh, I would like this line to read, I'll just comment out the original. Uh, instead of this, uh, map mapping call, I would like this to read something, uh, parse character or something. Let's see. That sounds great. Yeah. Uh, okay. Def parse char C. Oops. Sam forgets how to use Vim. <laughs> Yank that part, put it there. <clears throat> and let's see if that works. Okay. And Great. Yes, we do. Okay, okay, so now we have the first character. We can probably be done uh, quibbling over this now. Yep. Um, and uh, I do see a bug in there, but I think we'll leave it for now because it'll be interesting <laughs> to find later. Okay. Um, uh, but anyways, it, from here, it's actually stupid simple to create the rest. Mm-hmm. And if I... Um, actually, I'll let you do the same. Why don't you just um, copy that parses the character test mm-hmm. and change it to like parses wall, parses... You know what I mean? Like yep. each one. And I would be fine with just doing them all at once because it's actually just a case of editing the, uh, the mapping, you know. So we'll just say it parses all the things. All the things. All right. Uh, this is actually, well, before I do that, I actually would like to split this up because this this test is actually checking two different things. It's checking yes, that we got the floor, <clears throat> and we're also checking that, that we're positioning things within certain tiles. So I'm going to split true. that. Uh, it parses the care, uh, the... Uh, uh, static, call this the static environment. And so this is going to be for the floor, and then it parses the character uh, starting positions of the movable things, say. Okay. And so that's floor and that's character. Does that make sense? Yeah, the only thing. The reason I had those together, so maybe okay. this is a discussion point. Sure, yeah. That I was checking that, that so basically if you consider the square 
two, one. Mm -hmm. The the next one over, the empty space. So that's X that one okay. should parse is just four, right? Yeah. Which to me is kind of the static environment that the normal thing. Yeah, okay. I was testing that it not only locates the character, but that it correctly determines that the character is on a section of floor. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Like, um, the character is there. So consider, mm. for example, the dollar sign is going to be a crate on a floor, and this mm -hmm. asterisk is going to be a crate on a goal. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the character actually indicates two things. So I think I would be uh, okay with... Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> sorry. I realized just now that when you wrote character, I was reading player. Uh, yeah, I didn't use the word player because I always try to reserve that term for the person sitting at the keyboard. Right. Okay. <laughs> so character is overloaded in this case. Okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. 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 All right, I, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't mean the ASCII character. I mean the one that walks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know. <laughs> All right. So. It's complicated. So what's some interesting stuff to do? Uh, so we're going to say, well, you said something about 2-1 uh, to be a content. Uh, two ones or four. Da, 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 and you don't need a second test there, right? Well, I, do we want to say that oh, it's empty? To, to say that it's nil or empty? Yeah. Uh, I, I probably Maybe wouldn't no. write that test, but I'm totally cool with yeah. it if you want to. Okay. Um, and then... Two two is going to be an instance of floor. They're all instances. No, this one is goal, isn't it? Uh, I think you're confused on two two. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So three one is that what you meant? Uh, maybe I'm missing something as something else. So one, two two oh, is. I'm sorry. You I'm, the y coordinate. I'm forgetting that we're zero indexed again. Yeah, we're zero. Sorry. We're programmers. <sighs> okay. We, are, we always count at zero. <laughs> so that's uh, one, two. No, you so you were four. right on that one. Was I? That one was correct. Two, one. It's the one below the sign, right? Two, two. You changed the Y coordinate, so you went down into the row of walls. Okay. Right? Oh, I see. So this is three, one. Eight. That's the, okay. Okay, so three one should be an instance of floor, and it uh, should contain a crate. Is that right? Am I reading this uh, correctly? Three three one would contain a crate on a floor. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, all right. So next up, we're gonna go to four one, and four one contains a goal, or is it a goal tile? It, it's a goal. So it, it is a goal. It is a goal. It contains nothing. And it is. It contains nil. Yep. And let's see. One more at least. Uh, five one should be an instance of goal, and it should contain a crate. Does that sound about right? Uh, yes, I think it does. Okay. Let's run that. Okay. Uh, do that. Uh, two one should be an instance of Sokoban level four, and it doesn't, which is great. Uh, that's exactly what we expect. Oh yes, very good because we didn't put that in the map mapping. In the map mapping, right? <laughs> uh, I'll never live that name down. Um, let's see. Uh, escape. Uh, comma. Uh, shall I do some copy paste here too, or? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Today is the day I learned how important copy and paste <laughs> is in my programming life. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So paste Should some of those. Them. Listen to me. Right. Yeah. All right. So here, go ahead. Okay. Uh, There's some stuff yes. to work with. There it goes. Okay. So um, this is for. And it's the same, except... It has nothing in it, Whoops. right? That was not what I meant to do. Uh, uh, abort, abort. <laughs> abort. <laughs> um, okay, so that is that. This is 
we said a dollar sign, I think, and that was a level crate. Okay, and mm -hmm. then we had... Um, you could do these one at a time because these are running sequentially. Yeah, what did you say? I'm oh, sorry. you could save this as is and run it and see how far you get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Uh, good point. I mean, the tests are fast. Um, right. So we are on... 4-1. Expected, yeah, 4-1. So the dot, one. okay. The dot, yep, that's perfect. Um, so this one needs to be a goal. Instead of a floor, yeah. Right, so we take that out and then change this one. Uh, and mm -hmm. this one is also a goal. If we make it the asterisk. A uh, splat? Uh, yep. Okay. And then... Uh, it gets a crate. Uh, the goal like, has the crate. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, and then there's one more, which is the wall. And this can just take from this to the wall. And then do this. Okay. Oops, I have no idea what I hit there. In Emacs, it always means something, just not what you want. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So one one, I so, broke it. Yeah, how did we break the first one? That's interesting. Let's see. We expected its contents to be a crate. At one one, how did it? Wait, what um, line are we on? I bet we forgot to change one. We did. Respect thirty two. It's a bug in the text. Oh yeah, sorry. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, success. Yay. Yay. Okay. And then the only thing I would change here is, well, uh, I just, I, when I would break these off, I probably would have put, it parses the floor here, it parses the uh, crate, it parses crates here, it parses, does that make sense? Like yeah. I would have made each one a separate spec, well. I think. That's fine. Let's do that. That's it? Okay, but I'll let you do it since you have copy and paste. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. And we could, I think that's probably the right amount of paranoia, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Know. So this is not necessarily parses the character. It parses what? Uh, open floor. Open floor. Um, and this is a crate. And this is a goal, uh, an, op an unsatisfied goal. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. <laughs> and a satisfied goal. Or achieved, I suppose, would be a better word, but that's fine. Okay, How's that work so, for you? Perfect. I think it is perfect. Okay. okay. So, I told you that story to tell you this one. Yeah. All right. Can we take a, like, one-minute break? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Take all the time you need. Back in a sec. Okay. All right. I'm back. Okay. Uh, okay. Where were we? We were... We now have the working minimal parser. All right, right? so now let's uh, let's throw some curveballs in it. Yeah. So uh, the interesting thing about Sokoban levels, uh, from a parsing standpoint, is the one I gave you is very regular. Yes. Uh, in, in, as long as it's a rectangular shape, but uh, normal levels uh, don't look like that at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let me give you a uh, a example. Um, and I'll even use a non-horrible example. So let's do, uh, we'll set up a context of irregular levels or something. Okay. Irregular. 
Okay, and then again, I'll just do it as a regular map. Oh, I didn't notice that we were using lets in a context here. So you could actually just name them as map as level and level. That's true. But yes, that is true. Um, they still read better this way. Uh, yeah, I think they probably do. Uh, but it is true that we can just do that. Would you like um, me to copy paste that for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Okay. Um, okay. So end map, and then, and I can use auto complete here at least. I do have auto complete for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So let's just think about a super silly map. Let's say we have three here, and I'll sure we'll come back and edit this in a sec. But then we can have. Uh, whoops! I meant to put the player here. Um, like that, and then we have this idea of, let's make it an L shape. Yeah. So, something like this. So mm -hmm. the, the character will come down here, we'll put a crate right here, followed by a goal over here, then there will be the wall, yep. got one too many there, and this needs to extend out like that. Gotcha. So. Imagine we have this level. This gets you to two of the interesting problems you quickly run into when parsing silicon levels. Okay. The first is that, um, one, uh, this level is not square. Yes. So, so, like, right here, if you just take off the white space, you know, around this thing or whatever, then you won't... You, you'll, you won't have the first row won't be the same size as the other rows. Yes. So, so that's one issue. Another issue is this space character is now slightly overloaded. Okay. In that I guess you could technically call this space here and the imaginary space up here <laughs> the same thing. Right. Uh, but if you go to draw it or something, uh -huh. you probably want to differentiate these two things because you probably don't want to draw walkable floor ah. uh, in that spot, which is why I had us introduce the term of void, void yes. back in the level. Yep. I, I consider this area around the map kind of dead space or okay. void. So the void is like your null object for what you would return for the map. Right, okay. but then that way it can still have context and it yeah. doesn't cause you fits, right? Sure. So, okay. Um, okay, so that is the idea. So let's okay. write the first test we can to start exploring this concept. Sure. So, irregular. Um, you might want your regex to strip the leading white space oh, as well. Yeah. Good point. Um, Regular level, so we're making a sublime just level. Don't get over anxious, autocomplete. Um, Do you want to parse that? Oh, yeah, that's why I was doing that. It was trying to tell me. <laughs> uh, parser dot parse. And uh, a regular map. Yep. Okay. So, okay. and then, like you said, we should fix this. Which I can still do because I was smart enough to put the void on the right instead of the left. <laughs> Which is totally. Oh, easy. yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, there's the idea. So, we have just this irregular level that's misshapen, and then we run it through the parser to get that. So, then now, in here, let's say it. I would probably say something like squares off sure. levels. <laughs> Is that too weird language? Yep, I'd buy um, that. Okay, and the idea of it squares off levels, uh, I don't actually mean square, <laughs> which is weird, uh, rectangular, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but basically what I'm saying is I think every row should have the exact same width. Mm -hmm. um, and we can express that i believe it, pad, um, it pads the outside of the map would be another way of saying ooh, it pads yeah uh pads yeah it's a good idea pads the outside of the level how about that sure with nothingness <laughs> with, with the nothingness 
uh, paths outside. Now we need an excuse to introduce an object named Atreyu. Atreyu, <laughs> awesome. We're on it. <laughs> okay, so then the idea is that um, all of the uh, so all of the rows should have the exact same width. Um, so we'll just express that as let's do it like this. Expect to I'll just say be true. I think in this case. Okay. Expect to be true. <laughs> um, I'll do it like this of uh, irregular level. Dot rows dot all R R dot size should equal so R dot size should equal five by my count. Yeah, let's do it this way. Irregular level dot rows dot first. Size. Hmm. Okay. How's that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Kay. I'd buy that. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is it true? <laughs> well, I'd, I'd buy that as a as a way of testing what you're testing. Um, there's a point here about whether you're testing the right thing. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, that's a good. It's a good question. But like, I don't know. Is there a scenario where that wouldn't be true? Um, I don't know. I'm just wondering if maybe the right, uh, well, the test that I might have written um, yeah, yeah. would be something along the lines of expect that irregular level when you access something that wasn't strictly defined in the map gives you a void. Oh, uh, I, I'm getting to that. Okay. First, first I, I thought we would try, see, I, I kind of thought of it as two concepts. Okay. One, it needs to like square them up. And technically you can even argue that just parsing them as floor would be fine. Yeah, sure. Right? Like, or, or something. Yeah. Because technically, the character will never be allowed to walk there because he'll run into some wall before he right. gets there. But floor right? versus void is a rendering concern. Got yeah, it. I okay. was actually saying that was another thing. So I was trying to test the first one. All right, one thinking first. too far ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. Uh, there you go. All There's right. a new error message to work with. Great. Okay, so that gets slightly annoying. Um, <laughs> so this parser is going to have to map that thingy and now well now we either need to peek ahead or do some cleanup afterwards um, because on any individual line as we're parsing the line uh, we don't necessarily know if we've encountered the widest row right um, so let's see, probably the easiest thing I can think of for that, um, we're not terribly concerned with speed yet as far as I can tell, so we could just do a quick run through to find the max length. Okay. All right. So, uh. Yeah, I, I think it, for any Sokoban game, I can never imagine speed being a concern because... <laughs> You only parse the level once at the beginning, and, and these levels, yeah. I think the largest ones I have are like 17 by 20. Right. So. I mean, we'll let, we'd let a profiler tell us that anyway. So, right, yeah. So if we, if we assume that we have some cleverness like uh, length uh, or width of widest row, um, then we could take this line and pad it out. So line plus equals and then what would we put here? Well, ignoring your void for now, we can oh, yeah, give it... Definitely do that because it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to create an empty, we're going to pad this thing with a, with some floor tiles and we're going to give it a number of floor tiles that is line length uh, subtracted from the uh, uh, width, or I guess the length, length of longest line, right, which is a horrible name, 
but at least it's easy to search for. <laughs> right? And so if we got if we had this magical length of longest line, it seems like that should do the job. Does that seem right to you? Length of longest line, nice line length. Yes, okay. it does. All right, so the implementation of that is actually pretty simple. It's uh, map, lines, map, length, max, I believe. Let's find out. I guess that did it. Yes, that looks like that did it. So you squared them up. Okay. I agree. All right. So uh, shall I write the next one that fails and uh, pass it back to you? Actually, hang on, hang on one sec. I'm okay. thinking. Um, I am 90% sure you just introduced a bug, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm trying to think of how to expose it. Please do. Um, okay, yeah, let me, um, how do I switch to my screen? It's the mm. leader key, and then one. Yep. <laughs> Yay, I can still use it. Yay. Um, Yes, there is a bug there. Um, <laughs> I'm about to learn something. <laughs> so, I'm trying to think of how to make it show. It's kind of hard, actually. Do you want to tell um, me what the bug is, or do you want to show me what it is? No, that takes all the fun out of it. Yep, so, very good. <laughs> let's see. I'll just say it. Uh, for now, I can't think of a better way to say this, so it has a bug. <laughs> we'll it has no, right. no, we're, we're going to specify that it has no bugs. <laughs> it has no bugs. That's true. That would be better. Um, but let me see if I can uh, figure it out here. So I expect to be nil uh, irregular level at, uh, I need to see the level. Right here, uh, zero then uh, on the y and the x is three. I think that might be three comma zero. Is that, is that real? So that's going to give you the fourth one over. It it does. It is nil. Okay, so let me write it into a failure now. Okay. Um, how is that possibly uh, nil? I'm trying to think of the way to word it without giving away what happened. Okay. <laughs> so let's say um, it, yeah, I can't think of a way to do that. Okay. But let's just say it doesn't have a bug. We'll change the sure. name after you figure it out because it's a blast. Well, I'm also noticing um, that. Um, not to. Not, <laughs> not to be to known. Be. So. So now we should have a failure. Well, oh, was it expected not to be nil and was nil. Now okay. this is very interesting because if you check the very next one, mm -hmm. expect not, uh, not to be nil, uh, the very next one will not be nil. Irregular level four, four zero. zero will not be nil. I don't oh, think. do I have an... It is not nil because it failed on the three zero. Three zero is no, four zero is not no. There you go, Sam. I changed the error message for you. <laughs> okay. That is a bit of a stumper. Um, That's awesome, right? <laughs> yeah. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The rules that stop making sense. <laughs> There's a hole in the universe. Okay, uh, what I was going to uh, mention also is that uh, the form of this test is almost exactly the form of the next test I was going to write, which is that both of these things return a void. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. It, that we need that test. That's true. And that would have actually showed the bug. So, right? okay. So, so that's a good point. You Feel free to fix it. Okay. It was. Just, I was trying to think my way through, like, how do I expose this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Um. All right, so what are we supposed to have here? We're supposed to have a void. Uh, okay, so instead of expecting those, why don't I, uh, not to be nil, why don't I expect them to be kind of 
Sokoban level void, was it? Yes. Mm -hmm. And if we rerun that, should fail in the same, same way. way. Okay. Four zero was it? Oh, except now you should reverse them if you want to see the no problem. Because <laughs> the first one will be no. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No expected to be circle bound void. Okay. And then you can take out the other two. Cause, and you can change it to it calls them voids. But first, I would fix the no before I worry about the void thing. That's sure. horrible. <laughs> well, I suspect that the solution is the same. Uh, once I uh, spot the bug, right? No, actually, no? this is a totally different problem, I think. <laughs> I may be wrong. <laughs> All right. So if I just mark that as pending, we'll get back to it, right? Okay. Uh, yes, but you have you have them reversed actually. If you want to move the oh, sorry. stuff down. There you go. Yeah, yours is a much better test. Okay. Mine was me being clever. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so it doesn't have a bug, and we expected that to not be nil, uh, even though I... Okay. So, I took this line and I padded the end of the line with some extra spaces. So if, just for grins, I did a... Oops, a puts in front of that, and I rerun the tests, I should see a whole bunch of lines. Uh, and actually, instead of puts, I'm going to do uh, P. Oh. You see your answer? I have a new line in there. Yeah, that's right. How did I get a new line in there? Oh, because, it's, because I didn't it's strip the it. the end of all lines, right? Okay. So it, this might actually be interesting. Um, if you pee the line after it's modified, uh -huh. it might it might be interesting, especially for the people watching the video. If you, uh, yeah, just pee the line after it's modified. Uh, shall I pee it before and after? Uh, I think after will okay. be enough. It, it, it'll be really obvious. What you end up with is there are certain rows right here. Or, oh, I'm pointing. Right. Uh -huh. um, the, there's rows where there's a new line followed by spaces. Because you mm -hmm. threw the spaces onto the end. Without stripping they the came line. after the new line. The new line character yeah. is not a recognized symbol, so it parsed to nil. So yep. actually what I would do instead of fixing this, yeah. I would first choose to change the error message. I would uh, edit the default you gave it, mm -hmm. and I would make that default block, instead of returning nil, I would make it raise. So that if that ever gets called, we know we have an unrecognized whatever, and it'll just die immediately. All right, in which case, let's give it, well, we haven't given this thing a character yet, but we could. So we could say raise unrecognized characters C dot inspect. That's cool. Yeah, that's even better. And then where is call in here? Ah, so map mapping for C and then we'll just call it with C. Okay. And so now the error message. Do I still have the P's in there? I do. I'm gonna take that out too. Just to clean up the output. And uh Oh, oh, it's because we're using stabby. Oh, right. I forgot. The yeah. Again, my 187 bites me in the butt. All right. Yoza. Whoa. Wrong number of args. One for zero. Oh, oh because, because all of those are the new lines now, right? Get rid of the new lines and it fixes itself. Oh, okay. All of them are new line problems. Okay. So, uh, rather than line plus equals, I'm going to expand this out to line strip plus. That should do it. Or not. Maybe not. <laughs> Qua? Yikes. That's not good. Qua? Um, wrong number of arguments. One for zero. One for zero. Oh, so. Oh, the stabby lambdas are strict about their argument yeah. checking. So they need an Oops. empty argument. All right, so if I insert here a naked we should have read flat. Yeah, and I started to go there, but you sounded 
so confident in what the error was that I just... <laughs> Confidently wrong. Yeah. <laughs> See how I subtly blamed you, but praised you at the same time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. So okay. now you have fixed the bug, and we could remove my test and just bring yours in, because it's okay. better anyway. All right. Um, well, that was kind of fun. Was that one of the was... uh, pitfalls you were hoping to... No, to, no, or? that was just something I noticed when we typed it up. <laughs> Okay. No, that was that was not an intended pitfall. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So now there's this expected the uh, nil to be kind of a void. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, wait, no, it's not okay. that. It's. Yeah, it's okay. I think. Uh, is it not? What is it? What did we get here? What was it? Oh, okay. Expected floor to be void. Okay. It's correct. So we, the message is correct. We padded with a space, which parsed as yes. a floor tile. Right. Okay. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. Oops, sorry. Let me okay. go back to you. Okay. Right. Um, so, yes, there's this idea of... Oh, and I have, un, I have changes here, I guess. Oh. I can push across or something. Uh, should I kill it? Yes. yes. And reopen it. Okay. I have to say, yeah. I mean, that this buffer management is probably the worst part of using multiple editors. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of tricky. Once you... Actually, for me, the worst part is not having copy paste. Well, but... <laughs> okay, but that's not remote pairing. That's just my I know. machine I running your no Emacs. Idea. So. No idea what's going on there. Um, okay, right. this is cool. Um, I love that you used, I, I was thinking I would have used an underscore, oh, yeah. but then I would have bound, because the underscore being the universal symbol for okay. I'm ignoring yeah. this argument, but uh, the way you did it is even better because now you don't care how many arguments it takes, yeah. right? So, yeah, very good. The naked splat as I'll yes, the it. lone star. <laughs> the lone star, which is even better, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, that was that. Then... Uh, oh, yeah. Right, so what I wanted to do, um, I want to artificially put us back at green for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we, let's see. we got rid of the test saying that we didn't have a bug, and now that we don't have the bug, I think that's fine to pen that out. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and you okay. want to refactor something else. I do want to refactor a little. Which is totally um, legit. <laughs> um, let's see here. So, pad it based on that. And... So yeah, we're always padding on the right. Um, there is a method for this. What is it? Is it called? Is it a string? Is it left? Nope. <laughs> it's something like You could that. do something clever with uh, sprintf, but let's not. <laughs> yeah, sprintf will do it. There is actually, Ruby does justification. So center is one of them. L, L just, there L it is. Just. L just, okay. So the idea here oh. is if we do line dot strip dot L just mm -hmm. right here. And then we'll put our period here. And put your and length then, of longest in that. Yes, length of longest. And then... Then I that line should go away, yep. I hope it makes that go away. Let's see if that's right. Uh, Whoops, I don't need the documentation. Now I just want spots. Okay. Okay, it works. Okay, so right. yeah, cool. Just... Uh, just yeah, and that way we didn't have to do math on the length of line. All right, can I do a quick stuff. extract method on that also? On the uh, on the thing, yeah. sure. All right, yeah, go for it. So uh, load file. All right. So what I would like to do here is uh, extract that to def padded line. So for that, I would call it normal. Normalize. Okay, line. sure. And then that way I could do the strip and the pad. You know. Sure. Or something. And then in this, I could say normalized line line. Or honestly, I could even call it normalize. Yeah, normalize. That's true.
And how do I get to the... There you go. X. Okay. Um, okay, so yes. Okay. Uh, okay, anyways, that was just uh, fiddling. Yep. Um, okay, so the void problem. Yep. <laughs> the void problem. We won't go too deep into this. Um, but, like, it really depends on how you think about it. Um, for the level I have shown you, mm -hmm. um, that this is most Sokoban levels. I think there's actually some that are a tiny bit worse. Yeah. Let me see if I can right. find it. Now, yes, you did, here's an you did. You did drop a hint about leading white space. Which, Maybe is that where you're going yes. with this? Um, no, okay. actually, <laughs> not in this particular case. I'm going to drop, uh, let's show a different leveling here. Okay. This is a, oh god, I can't, can I paste? Yay. Okay. Um, but, so here okay. is an actual Sokoban level. This is level uh, three, by the way, so not that complicated. Okay. Um, but uh, it has interesting ramifications in that you can start to see this overhang concept, right? Oh, like, yeah. It, this here. And mm -hmm. the reason I show that is, is it kind of gets you thinking along these lines that could eventually be horrible. Like, for example, <laughs> can you imagine a level shaped like a G or something? Yeah. Right? A giant G so that you had to go into the middle and up under that thing. All of that could be void, yes. technically, right? Okay. Or a, another really horrible concept. Think about like some big level like this, you know, with an opening. Yeah, let's make this whole line open. And then here, somewhere in the middle, there could be a closed off section. Yeah, a donut. Right? Like this. You're doing an ASCII donut. <laughs> an ASCII donut, yep. yes. Yeah, so technically, I believe that that middle section should be rendered as void. Yeah. Right, yeah. if it's totally enclosed, and the other should be not. I will tell you, the solution I came up with does not handle this donut scenario. Sure. Um, so, I mean, we can go, you know, uh, we're probably about done here. Yeah. We don't have to go too far down this mm -hmm. rabbit hole, but um, just as a, uh, you know, kind of get you thinking sure 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 thing. all right well can you leave those last couple of lines with a donut because that actually oh, yeah, illustrates sorry. a uh you you short-circuited what Oops. my sorry. Uh, approach as i was thinking ahead um let's see. cool thank you let's see here we go let's right. do something like that so that's yeah. So yeah, with a, with that other map that you had pasted in, I was thinking, okay, so it might be the case that you can you can count how many walls you've passed over in a line, and you can use that to determine whether or not you're in map <laughs> yeah, or in the void. Exact same spot. <laughs> right, but this donut actually perfectly illustrates why that doesn't work. Yeah. Um, there, there are. I have not seen any Sokoban level like this, yeah. but um, that's only looking through the original levels so there right. were the original levels that came with the game that pretty much everybody knows and then there is kind of a level making community yep. online there's a, a place where you can go get levels and i could easily imagine somebody doing something like this there. right so i think um we've now uh stumbled into a topography problem and i don't have the yeah. math for that <laughs> the math yeah. part yeah so um so yeah, the question is, do you want me to show you what I did or not? Because it's horrible. Okay. Uh, does it deal with the donut hole problem? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have a theory about how to do the donut hole okay. problem. Should we do that? Well, we're running short on time right now. Uh, I think I can do it so. fairly quickly, maybe. I think. Do you want... Well, okay. So one thing we could do is we could... Uh, try something that at least satisfies the canonical set of levels. Okay, and let's do that. that would probably be, uh, that I would probably want to try that using that sort of, Oops. you know, flip-flop, am I, you know, how many walls have I come across so far? Okay, go for it. Uh, or how many times have I switched from wall to not wall, I guess is the right uh, Actually, does that work on this example right here? I worry that it doesn't. 
Uh, well. Because right here you're going to run into a wall, then run into a wall, then run into a wall. What does that tell you? Well, let's see. So starting from from the minus one position, right, we hit the first one and we hit wall. So now we're in the wall state. Oh, so you're saying like a running stretch of wall. Yeah. Uh, but I still don't think it answers because then you count this entire thing as one wall. Uh-huh. And then oh, wouldn't that make you yeah, assume yeah, yeah. that you're now in an open floor section okay. after it? Okay, no, yeah, you're right. Okay. It, it's surprisingly <laughs> horrible, right? Like, you see yeah. it, you see these little maps, yeah. and you're like, this is really trivial to parse. And then I got to this part, and I was oh. like, and now I want to do bad things to the person that didn't mark the inside square with some other ASCII character. Yeah, you know? right, because I was about... You know, I was thinking earlier, maybe we could pad with a bang instead and have the bang represent void because that would be so much easier. But that's not how the community levels are defined. Yeah, so you okay. could pad with... It, that would be fine, I think. Like, that would actually work in this Let's case. Let's solve this case. Try that. Try that, okay. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Let's see, did we... No, this is still pending. Okay. Okay. And it, you said it was X O X capital O. No, that's just going up and those down. Are, those are my own bindings. Okay. Um, X O goes clockwise, X capital O goes counterclockwise. Oh, I see. Okay. So if I run this, now I get a failure. And I can short circuit this by doing. You know, if I if I create a bang that returns void, then I should be able to ooh L just. Uh, L just look okay. it up. I think it I think it'll do it. Uh, oh, it has it a pad string. A yes, it does. I think it takes a second parameter. Okay, so let's see if that actually just does the job. Seems to. So yeah, that's nice. let's break that. Let's break that. <laughs> it's shockingly easy, sadly. Uh, actually, so yeah, the only thing you have to do to break it is to flip my map horizontally. Yep, exactly. If you flip my map horizontally, then it doesn't okay. work. Okay. <laughs> um, so. And for that, you can you can detect for that case too. Mm -hmm. um, you can. Uh, it, that actually wouldn't be very hard. You could just hit the regex and then turn all leading white space a wall. into bangs, yep. right? Buy that. But but um, it doesn't fix uh, leading white space padding. Hang on, I'm pretty sure there is a real level uh, mm -hmm. that it actually doesn't work okay. on. Let's see. Um, I think I right. found one like that. Let me see. Here. Well, so this is. Obviously, going to be yes, insufficient. There is a real level. Okay. Do you want to show me the real level that breaks that? Because that sounds fun. Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. They get surprisingly horrible, surprisingly fast. <laughs> um, there. There's a real level right there. So yep. if you see on the top yep. here, this section in here would not be detected by the right. If we change the leading white space. That would get these characters over here, mm -hmm. and it would, and it would also get, the get the top, the, right. this guy over here, yeah. but it would not get these. Right, and that's basically the same donut hole problem again. Right, yeah. So. It's a okay. donut hole issue, right? Okay. So my, um, uh, I, I'll tell you okay. what I did, and then I'll tell you how I think it should yeah. be done. that sounds good. Does that sound good? Okay, so what I actually did, and... I'm not going to show you the code because I'm not proud of this. <laughs> That's fine. Um, it would probably take longer to figure out what the code was doing than for you to explain your thought process. Yes. So. What I did is I do basically the solution we've been discussing where changing the forward spaces and the ending padding to a different character. Sure. And then I transpose the map and I do that process again. Change leading characters and ending characters to um, 
the some other character and because it's transposed this section will now be on the left side i see um and so that does catch this section okay so that gets and you then the outside I, of the donut. yeah so basically I, i'm coming in from the outside oh, right i actually rather like um, that transpose trick that's nice and assuming the maps aren't huge and you're not bit blitting all over the place that's not bad it works on every map in the standard 90 map. Sure. I checked. Okay. Um, but again, it would not do the donut yeah, problem. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, the right way to do it, I believe, the way I, I have been thinking about this and losing sleep over it, basically, yeah. is um, I believe you should find the character in the map. Mm hmm because he's always inside. He's in the inside oh, portion. Oh, and find and all the reachable spaces. And then I would just make, yeah, I would just make a queue starting from him, uh -huh. and I would process every square. So I would add all neighbors and never add anything that's a wall. Essentially, you're but, talking uh, about mark and sweep garbage collection for the map. Exactly. I, I would go through and sweep through the entire thing and make those floors or whatever, and then... Or, yeah, I find some way to mark the... So I guess I would parse everything as void yeah. if it was a space. And then I would have a process that goes yeah. through and finds the character, adds all surrounding squares except walls, and one by one switches all voids to floors. Okay. Which I think would actually do the right thing and solve the donut problem. But, that um, it's horrible. is... Well, without knowing any clever mathematical topological tricks for short-circuiting that, I think that seems like the right thing to do. Yeah, there there may be better algorithms. Yeah. So if you watch this video and you know the right algorithm, please tell yeah. us because that way we can sleep. <laughs> but, you know. I, right. I just found it was funny because I saw this little ASCII yeah. map and I'm like, oh, I can parse that. That's so true. Right, right. You know, and then... It was funny it's not like it's CSV it... or something, so... <laughs> right, yeah, it's not like it's hard, yeah. jeez. <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, it's funny how quickly it goes off the rails. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, anyways, I, I had a good time. I thought that was yeah, fun. Yeah, this is cool. Thank you, that is a really fun cool. little problem, and I'm, I might sit down and play with that for a bit, but... Now you can lose sleep, Yeah, too. exactly. <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you so very much. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's fun. Uh oh, it's been modified since it was saved. Don't do that. Oh, no. <laughs> I broke it. Um, okay. Well, very cool. Are we all done here? I think we are done here. Um, let's see. The last thing I might want to show is for how you get out when you're done. Um, okay. The, the VMAX, because nobody knows how to do that. Well, yeah, there's that too, right? Um, <laughs> I was going to say. It's Control X, Control C. Yes. And I just want to leave. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, back. Please just do it. No, don't say it. Save not confirm. No. <laughs> Poor Emax. It really uh, wants to help like you. It. Is it Q for quit? Please <laughs> answer yes. No. Uh, exit anyway. Yes. yes, thank you. Oh, oh that's no, your shell. Uh, okay. okay, so yeah. No wonder people can't quit you, Max. I can't. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, what I was actually talking about, how you get out of the uh, pair programming session. I, obviously, you could just close yeah. your uh, terminal window, and my machine would eventually detect that your SSH connection had died. Um, but that's rude. It's a little rude. Uh, you can exit gracefully by doing uh, the Tmux prefix and D to detach. Um, so mm -hmm. if you do that, we'll just show what that looks like. I so I, on my screen it said JEG2 has detached. Now if you can type Wemux pair again, I want to show the other way we can do this. Wemux pair. Okay. And the other thing that Wemux gives you is Wemux kick JEG2. Uh, so if I type this, uh, it requires sudo, and so you can actually try and interfere with me if you don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I can type characters right. as fast as I Or, can. I mean, the other thing, too, is that I can actually open a, a separate window, which I'm going to drag onto my recording screen. And I can, there I can type Wemux kick JEG2. Type my password. And it says JEG2 kicked successfully, and you should have got, I'm actually curious about the message that you got. Uh, it says, uh, it actually killed my entire SSH. Really? Right, so. Oh. 
Yeah, uh, connection to your IP address closed by remote. Well, okay access. then. So I guess that, when yeah, it kicks closes. you, it kicks you hard. Yeah, it's it's all the way up. We might also mention just because um, as uh, when you see my screen in this video uh, on the times we've been pairing, there's some dots around the edge. Oh yeah, and that's actually um, from the size differential in our two screens. Mm -hmm. We had this conversation when we did a dry run of it yeah. earlier. Sam uses a gigantic monitor, <laughs> and I use a laptop screen. Uh, but I assume you went down to your laptop screen for this. I went down to my laptop screen, and I actually chose a rather large font for screencasting purposes because encoding to video tends to blur things. Right. And so that's, uh, yeah, I didn't even think about it. So his screen was slightly smaller than mine. It fit about maybe 8 to 10 less characters yeah. on it. And so that yellow bar with the dots that we can see over here is the... Um, that difference yeah. where it's just blocking that out for me. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. That was a lot of fun. And uh, now I at least have something to think about the next time I can't sleep anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it was a fun problem. I, I was surprised by, like, you, you know, I, I expected it to be really simple parsing these maps. And then, and it is to do the basic thing, right? We showed that. I mean, 30 minutes you can read you know, basically all the maps. But if you go into that differentiating outside squares from inside squares, that gets pretty horrible pretty mm -hmm. fast. So. Yeah. It was interesting. Uh, fun problem. Well, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, I should probably go do something productive. Yeah, today. I probably <laughs> should do that too.